With your only 640 KTIB News, I'm Rainey Blanchard. Four Louisiana women will be inducted into the Louisiana Center for Women and Government Hall of Fame at Nichols State University. The inductees for 2001 are Lois Gail Degbro of Lafayette, Dr. Joanne C. Ferriel of Thibodeau, Dr. Margaret B. Montgomery Richard of New Orleans, and C. Cecile B. Tozan of Chag Bay. A luncheon will be held in their honor this Saturday at the Donald G. Bollinger Memorial Student Union Cotillion Ballroom on the Nichols State University campus. The center's advisory board board and past Hall of Fame inductees have the job of nominating the women to be selected, according to Center Executive Director Felicia Harry. It's kind of difficult for me to know everybody who's done everything, so I count heavily on that board, and they are the ones who actually make the decisions about who will be inducted and who won't be. And it is a tough decision sometimes because there are a lot of Louisiana women, and we have purposefully not inducted anybody who's still holding an office. And, you know, if you look at the Louisiana legislature now and women who are currently holding elected positions, there are still a lot of women yet deserving of our honor. The keynote speaker for the 8th Annual Luncheon is award-winning journalist and author Cokie Roberts, co-anchor of the ABC News program this week with Sam Donaldson and Cokie Roberts. She is the daughter of retired Congresswoman Lindy Boggs and the late Louisiana Congressman Hal Boggs. Roberts is well known for her coverage of politics and the role of women in politics. Charter member and advisory committee co-chair Laura Bando talks more about Roberts' achievements. Koki has won many awards for her journalism efforts, including the highest award, the Edward R. Murrow Award. Koki has also won an Emmy. Everybody recognizes what an Emmy is, and that was for her contribution to the ABC News special, Who is Ross Perot? Call 448-4770 for more information or to purchase tickets. Several citizens are responsible for saving a, long, a young lady's life Saturday after her vehicle overturned off of U.S. Highway 90, about a mile and a half west of LA-20 near Gibson. According to state police, witnesses who saw the crash responded immediately by stopping to assist in pulling 18-year-old Meredith Bonner out of the vehicle, which had come to rest upside down in the swamp. About four to five people worked together to carefully lift one side of the car to get her out. Trooper Matt Traha says Bonner suffered moderate injuries, but it could have been worse. Uh, when they originally had pulled her from the vehicle, she was not breathing. Uh, she then started breathing on her own about a, probably about a minute later from what we're gathering. But when we first got there, they saw the leg sticking out the back seat, and the rest of her body was underwater. So she, she was underwater for probably about a, a good minute. John says Troop C is amazed at the efforts of those who rescued Bonner. To go into a, a swampy area, um, not knowing what's there, not really, not really caring or having any concern about what's there for your own safety, to do what they did is just incredible. Um, you know, this, this really goes to show that not only what, what people can do, but what kind of area we, that we live in. Troop C Commander Ralph Mitchell called the rescue, quote, nothing short of incredible. The Bahia Lafourche Freshwater District has a message for those who have crab traps, fish lines, and hoop nets in the bayou from Lockport to Thibodeau. The Water District will be operating a small tugboat in that area from March 19th through the end of April. Anyone with questions is, is requested to call 447-7155. The Committee of Lafourche Parish Civic and Business Leaders met for the first time earlier this month to consider making changes to the number of parish government boards. The Blue Ribbon Committee will meet every month until October when it will report its findings to the Parish Council. The committee last week named Chemco Industries' Jacob Giardina as its chairman, Larry St. Germain as co-chair, and Freddie DeLon Jr. as secretary-treasurer. The Jerome Parish Council is trying to make the roads a little safer. Council member Ray Brujo introduced a proposal to the Policy, Procedure, and Legal uh, Committee last night asking the National Association of Counties and the State of Louisiana to look into ways of educating the public on ways of using cellular phones more safely in automobiles. Brujo stresses he is not trying to pass a law banning or restricting the use of cell phones in vehicles. Come on, I don't want to stop people from using cell phones. Heck, I use them myself. Sometimes I have two of them. You know, but I think that there's a safe way to do it, and quite possibly by asking uh, NACO to look at this, and if there's something that the state could possibly, use, possibly do, 
to implement the safety features, I think that's something we should be on board to, to do. We can always say that we're addressing the issue. In other business, the Council's Budget and Finance Committee received the results of a study conducted by Dr. Chris Cox and Morris Coates from Nickel State University on the feasibility of bringing a junior league hockey team to the Hama Terrebonne Civic Center. Most council members said they are encouraged by the information presented but need more time to study the report before committing the $1 million needed to upgrade the Civic Center. The issue will be on the agenda for discussion at the committee's next meeting, March the 27th. A grand jury is scheduled to hear the case of a Vanderbilt Catholic high school teacher accused of inappropriate conduct with three female students. 55-year-old John Keefe of Homa was arrested back in January on three counts of indecent behavior with a juvenile after parents accused him of kissing and touching three teenage girls who attend Vanderbilt Catholic High. The grand jury will decide whether the teacher will stand trial on the charges. A decision is expected to be handed down late today. Workers at a Galliano Towing Company are trying to keep unions out of their business. Gedry Brothers Towing employees have begun circulating a petition against the alleged efforts of Offshore Mariners United, a group of maritime unions hoping to unionize the offshore oil and gas industry. The petition claims that the union organization has harassed employees in an effort to unionize. These allegations come after recent allegations made by offshore mariners. The Gedry Brothers management has harassed and fired employees who were in favor of a union. Those complaints have been filed with the National Labor Relations Boards. Gedry Brothers denies the accusations. The company has about 100 employees. For these stories and more, you can read the latest edition of The Courier, or you can log on to The Courier's website at homatoday.com. For your oldie 640 KTIB News, I'm Rennie Blanchard. Have a great afternoon.